For some reason, Mushoku Tensei's second ending never really caught my attention while part 2 was airing and it wasn't until months after it finished that I started to really love the song. I guess we can thank YouTube Music for constantly shuffling it into my workout playlists, but I'm still at a loss as to why it didn't do much for me in the first place. Granted, Kakko no Inazuke's fantastic first opening also took a few months to sink in for me, so clearly my early impressions of songs really don't mean much in the grand scheme of how good they really are. As Mushoku Tensei has proven time and time again, Ohara Yuiko is unstoppable when it comes to writing and composing amazing songs, and being the only singer to have touched any of the series' themes will never have to worry about the future of the anime's openings, endings, or insert songs. So, without further ado, let's give my past self a kick and get into what makes Kazuto Yukumichi such an incredible song. <laughs> Keeping form with Mushoku Tensei's thematic composition, the second ending uses a standard band setup with an acoustic guitar, two electrics, bass, piano, drums, and of course Ohara herself as the singer. This stands in contrast to the three new openings that also continue the theme of being more musically related to each of the corresponding segments within the story, not to mention the revival of Tabibito no Uta rearranged with darker harmonies and instrumentation to recontextualize Eris and Rudy's homecoming. Kazeto Yukumichi opens with a reversed effect, outlining an A major 7 chord before blasting in soon after. This reversal is integral to how the lyrics for the song will conduct the character's narratives later on, but we'll get into that later. Looking ahead, you can see that despite the song's intro and verse being in the key of C minor, we rarely actually land on an actual C chord, giving the music a slightly upward lilt in spite of the overall gloominess that seems to hang over the song. While many of the harmonies feature C minor notes, such as bar 2 and 4's piano chords, the basses A and B turn this dark C minor into a bright and colorful A major 9. In both cases, these change into B major 7 chords with the A holding steady in the bass, anchoring us to a perceived root note of A while the harmonies simply pivot around above it. This sort of circular pivot motion is a reflection of the story as Rudy and Eris try to make their way home to Roa and Buena Village. Their journey frequently gets sidetracked by unexpected events, and they, along with nearly every other character in the story often end up searching for displaced family members and other loved ones without any leads. This lack of leads has them going in circles, any accomplishments made in the interim contributing very little, if anything, towards their actual goal. Following a transitional 4, 5, minor 6 cadence, we're left hanging on an oddly unresolving chord right at the end, an A minor 7, which almost seems to act as a secondary dominant with its C and G naturals, but quickly transitions back into a regular A major 7, merely extending the sense of building tension as we move into the first verse. <laughs> The lyrics begin with Is this sky the same sky I was looking at by the window? No matter where the members of Dead End find themselves, the current state of their world leaves them wondering how it all could have changed so much from their relatively peaceful pasts. For Rudy especially, these lyrics can be experienced more viscerally from the moment we saw him learning magic by the window of his house to now, where he finds himself whisked away into all sorts of foreign lands in the wake of a disaster. <laughs> The following line, It seems like the twilight was colored to read my heart, mirrors the music's overhanging gloom in words, capturing the sense of unease in spite of the lighthearted musical arrangement. The music itself has a fairly standard J-pop chord progression, starting with A, B7, G sharp minor, C sharp minor, a 6, 7, 5, 1. Again, this B7 chord has the bass dragging us down on the A, though now we can interpret it a bit differently from before thanks to the lyrics. Where before this constant A felt like the aimless exploits of Mushoku Tensei's characters, it now feels more like the goals they keep in mind on their seemingly endless journeys. The past remains the same, yet there is no way to return to it, so they must carry on ever forward into the uncertain future, reflected in the darker minor chords that follow. <laughs> Yeah. 
Further continuing this idea of pressing forward, the chord progression that follows is a rising 4-5-6. Similar to the opening section's transitional cadence, though the suspended A major chord is resolved to E, the relative major's tonic, a move that has us retroactively perceiving a mode shift on the word tasogare that changes the cadence into a 2-3-4-1 motion. With this nice return to our major 1 chord, the music's character reflects the accomplishments made by Rudy and the others, even if it hasn't necessarily gotten them closer to achieving their overall goals. This circles around in the next short progression of C sharp minor, B, E sus, E, a 6 5 1, accompanied by the first half of the line, Mujaki na hibi o oita basho de kaze ga boku ra o mukairu yo ni fuite iru. In the place where we put all of our innocent days, the wind is blowing as if to welcome us. <laughs> Like the anchor on A from before, this circular motion around our major tonic E reflects the tone of the words in the place where we put all of our innocent days. This has the same reminiscent nostalgia that grounds the characters in the goals that they pursue, whether it is Rudy and Eris' desire to return home, Rui Jared's ambition of restoring the spared reputation, or Paul and Roxy's journeys to locate and secure the members of the Grey Rat family. The second half of the line, the wind is blowing as if to welcome us, is where the harmonies begin to foreshadow the grim despair that this part of Mushoku Tensei has been working up to, Rudy and Eris' homecoming. The F-sharp minor and G-sharp minor are nothing we haven't heard before, but this time moved to a dissonant A minor major 7, begging a resolution to E that we're instead met with by an incredibly crunchy deceptive cadence to F-sharp half diminished 7 over G-sharp. Where the lyrics are sort of calm and inviting, the harmonies undermine any security that the words might have given us. <laughs> The chorus then shifts gears quite intensely, changing to a B flat major key and opening with a bright E flat major 7 on the lyrics The city and people I saw in my dream remain unchanged. Again, the chord progressions have returned to a relatively simple J pop structure E flat major 7, F major, D minor 7, G minor, 4, 5, 3, 6. But the lyrics give us a sense of the earlier story beats in Mushoku Tensei's second part. Rudy and Eris don't know what's become of anyone or anything back in their homelands, and so they can only hope and imagine that everyone is still alright. Their understanding of the situation is that, ideally, everything is as they remember, unchanged and in the state of their own imaginations. By ending on the minor harmonies, we get a sense that even if they hope this to be the case, we and they know that it probably isn't. <laughs> The final line of the chorus continues off of the previous line with like the wish I made on the first star that day on the way back home. Putting the two lines together, we can quite easily picture the point these lines are referring to, specifically when Rudy and Eris first wake up in the demon continent and meet Rui Jer. From here, the harmonies progress in a fairly predictable way, circling around the same few chords and alternating between E flat major 7 and F7 at the end. Unlike the first ending, however, we aren't met with any sort of resolution at the end, but an abrupt cutoff that leaves us suspended and awaiting some sort of payoff that never comes. Even in the full version of the song, while we do get a final chord following this build, it still isn't the B flat major that we want, opting for the minor variant so as to keep the story feeling unfinished and open ended. One point to note is that, while the 92nd version of most anime openings and endings tend to feature lyrics that are easy to associate or tie to the ongoing narrative of the series, the full versions of the song sometimes deviate away into more general territory because, simply put, there isn't any pressure to stay within the constraints of the story past the first chorus. This doesn't necessarily mean that the lyrics or musical arrangements suddenly go off in wildly unrelated territory, not always at least, but from the interpretive standpoint that I approach my analyses with, a lot of these anti songs do start to drift off into areas that become more of a stretch to tie to their associated series. Uniquely, Mushoku Tensei's songs actually seem to double down on the narrative relevance in the parts we don't hear, and this song is a perfect example. Where the openings are quite clearly reflective of the overall musical tone and setting of the story, the endings are much more abstract, the first being a love letter from an ambiguous sender that fans can't seem to help themselves trying to spoil me on the identity of. You guys have got to stop. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> 
and this one having a much more narrative-driven monologue from, presumably, Rudy's perspective. The second verse has Ohara singing about the painful nostalgia of days long past, now replaced with an emptiness when she, or rather Rudy, returns home to find nothing left. Specifically mentioning the memory of his mother ties the lyrics here in the second chorus into the story even more so, with Rudy and Paul's reunion resulting in a falling out due to the disappearance of Zenith, Aisha, and Lilia. <laughs> Like many Japanese songs, Kazeto Yukumichi features a chorus that changes its lyrics each time, keeping only the theme and word patterns the same so that the song doesn't feel incoherent. The second chorus goes from the dreamt city and people staying as they always were, to the city, people, and even the dream itself changing to help make the dreamer stronger. <laughs> As Rudy comes to experience the changes in his homeland and the people that once inhabited it, the dream he had cannot override the changes he sees right before his own eyes. For the final chorus, the ever-changing city, people, and dream are preceded by When I Close My Eyes, I'm Back There. Here he has acknowledged the changes that are constantly occurring, no longer resembling the childhood he once knew and the peaceful times that accompanied it. <laughs> The final lines leave a bittersweet feeling, showing how, in spite of this acknowledgement, the memory of how things once were will always remain in his heart so long as he keeps his eyes closed and remembers in his dreams. This no longer only makes sense in the context of his homecoming, but also the experiences that he had with Dead End and, most importantly, Eris. With nothing left but his own thoughts and a muted sense of responsibility toward his family, Rudy's journey must continue on, even if he has to do so alone and with only his memories to keep him sane. Thus we come full circle back to the final open-ended B-flat minor chord that has the adventure continuing onward, albeit in a much more melancholic tone than we may have initially expected. Despite how Mushoku Tensei's ending sounds stylistically, it's amazing that they have just as much narrative relevance as the openings do. The harmonies and chord progressions might not be overly complex or the most musically interesting, but it's the way that they work in tandem with the lyrics that just really helps to sell the story and further proves just what an amazing artist Ohara Yuiko is. But like I've said in the past, this is all just an interpretive look at the music from the perspective of someone who hasn't read the source material, so take all of this with a grain of salt. But what what did you guys think of the analysis? Make sure to let me know down in the comments, but uh, you know, again, I haven't read the source material, so maybe this time try and avoid spoilers if you can. And while you're at it, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel. And if you want to get access to all of the musical transcriptions I do for all of my analytical videos, make sure to go over and support me on Patreon. Thanks as always for watching, and I will see you in the next one.